Hello, this is Taylor Talks Comics with another guest um, video for Organic Price Books, the best place to buy comic books on the web. Um, today, we're going to do an overview over the recently released Complete 8-Ball by Daniel Klaus. So this is the Complete 8-Ball by Daniel Klaus. I'm going to move the camera. Stay with me here. Okay. This was recently released by Fanagraphics. You can still buy this on the Organic Price Books website. Um, it does carry a cover price of $49.99. You can buy it on the Organic Price Books website for $45 right now. And they will package it in a love with love and care and make sure it gets to you in primo mint condition, like the only way that Organic Price Books knows how to send books. And they also have the best customer service available in comic books on the web in my opinion, so um, if you have any issues with the order or whatnot, they'll take care of you. This is the Complete 8-Ball. This collects issues number 1 through 18. This is a paperback edition of a book. This is by Daniel Klaus. And this has got a new cover design and artwork because this has been previously released in another format, which I'll show off here in a second. Here's the spine. Got 8-Ball. Daniel Klaus, Fanagraphics is the publisher, and that's um, the great Dan Pusse, if you uh, want to pronounce his name that way. It's is exactly what you're thinking about right now, how his name's pronounced, and that's the joke. Here's the back cover with a little blurb here, some new blurbs from different PR articles, even with one from Simon Ham Hanselman, one of my favorite cartoonists going in comics today, and he... Um, has a blurb on here. So this was previously released in this hardcover slipcase edition with two volumes. This is a great set. The problem is this box set is wildly out of print and it fetches for like, it can go anywhere from 200 to 400 dollars on eBay and those kinds of things. And as far as we know, Fanagraphics has said that this is not coming back into print. I would be willing to bet that this is going to be the new evergreen way that Fanagraphics is going to keep this book into print or keep this series in print in collected edition form. Um, just because it's easier to reprint this in paperback form format than it is to do the hardcover slipcase. And not to mention that this hardcover slipcase were true facsimile editions in that they even took it to the extreme where... Let me get my camera right there. You can see like the different paper colors because they use different, every paper stock that the book was actually originally printed on, they use. So like the covers are glossy. These first issues were on this like cheap, almost newsprint matte paper. And then as you get further and further, the paper gets a little bit better quality because they start putting it on better quality. So we're leaving it to glossy pages and then total color eventually. So that alone, if you think about having to print all those different types of paper stocks together, cost a lot of money, not to mention the fact that it's hardcover. And it also was, um, I believe, $119 was the cover price on that thing when it first came out. So, And that was a handful of years ago. Uh, today, it'd probably be $150 at least, cover price. Like I said, this is only $49.99. So not only is it the cheapest way for Fanagraphics to keep this book in print, it's also probably the cheapest way for fans to, to read it, which I'm happy about because I want more fans to check out Daniel Klaus and his comic books, especially 8-Ball, because the first 18 issues of 8-Ball, for my money, is one of the greatest comic book series ever. I know uh, my last guest review, <laughs> I did 4K and Price Books, I said that about Love and Rockets, I promise I don't say that about every single comic book. Um, April and, and Love and Rockets, especially in independent comic books, truly are some of the best comics ever released. So um, let's go through the, the build of this book and whatnot. Like I said, the that hardcover book had all the different paper stocks. This is all matte paper throughout the entire thing, even the covers. Oh, geez, I spin the page. Um, nothing different about this paper stock. But it's the good thing is none of the content is missing. All of the content in that box set in those two volumes is included in this and you can see like the different um 
widths like they're about the same if you don't take into account the hard covers there and the trim size is about the same too as far as like the height goes i guess it's a little bit smaller but again you have to take into account the uh, hard cover backing board <clears throat> so what makes eight ball so great and why should you read it if you're not familiar with Dano Klaus. First of all, you might be familiar with Dano Klaus. He is the comic book writer that wrote the comics that the movies Ghost World, um, Art School Confidential, and Wilson were based off of. Um, this first cover, inside cover here, shows you the Antisha and also tells you what is eight ball. A little blurb by about who Daniel Klaus is. That's his caricature that he drew himself. And here's the first, the cover of the first issue. I need to make sure I get this whole thing into the comic book here, or into the camera. Um, and then you get into the issues. So if you're familiar with Ghost World, Wilson, or Art School Confidential, then you're familiar with Daniel Klaus on some level, at least those movies, if you're familiar with that. Um, the April series, the comic book series, was a one-man anthology. So what that means is you have one guy, one cartoonist, um, that went in and put together 24 to 32 pages of a comic book. He did all the lettering, all the penciling, all the inking, eventually all the coloring, because these do become color eventually. All the story writing. Everything done on his own. And 8-Ball is not a... It's not 18 issues of like the same story. It's an anthology of stories that he writes. But if that turns you off, if anthologies in general seem like, oh, there's not, you know, I want a full story, don't fret because these are serialized throughout the entire thing. So like right here, the first story, like a velvet glove cast in iron, has a strip in the first, uh, correct me if I'm, in the, my, if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think the first 10 issues of April like a velvet cast and iron has a strip in it in each of those 10 issues telling the whole story throughout. And then Ghost World was eventually <clears throat> serialized in, was first serialized in April. It's since become a trade paperback, hardcover, and a movie that you can read or watch, I guess, um, separately. But um, first it was serialized in here with one strip at a time for eight to 10 issues. Same thing with Pusse, Dan Pusse, which has now been collected in paperback. Um, that's been collected in here as well. So you do get lots of story. Lots of story that is takes place across the issues, and it's a fun little bit because you'll get like a little bit of the story, and then you'll read a little bit of the story in the next issue. So you, in one issue, you'll get a few stories, and you'll see them connect. Like a Velvet cat, Glove Cast in Iron is like this surrealist horror story. And it's probably, if you're not, if you're coming to this video, which I imagine a lot of Organic Price Books fans um, are fans of like DC, Marvel, uh, Image, Dark Horse, and that kind of thing. And that's why I want to show off these great Fantagraphics comic books for JP and Organic Price Books, because there's so many great comic books involved here. So when I say surrealist horror, um, emphasis on the surrealist part. This is not your typical horror story. You're not going to get, like, you know, demons jumping out from out of the corner. You're not going to get slasher, blood and guts kind of things. It's surrealist horror, which which is just, like, weird and um, unsettling, I think would be a good way to say it. A very much similar to kind of, like, Twin Peaks vibes, if you're familiar with that TV show. Um... And it, it, it's one of my favorite horror comics. It's not too much unlike Charles Burns' uh, Black Hole, if you're familiar with that. Kind of a similar vibe there, which is like this unsettling kind of horror that like is different than any other horror that I can describe. Um, Dan Posse, which is collected into this thin tra trade paper back here. And that's a great thing, too, is that if you're not wanting to put down the money for this, you can try to buy all these collect or different collections if like one story that I described sounds more interesting to the other. Like a Velvet Glove Cast and Iron was also collected in trade paperback. Um, I have that uh, somewhere. I think I might have lent it to somebody because I can't find it today for this video. 
Um, but this is also. And like I said, the name is ex exactly as you're imagining it should be pronounced. Um, there's even funny little bits about people pronouncing it wrong, wrong within the comic. This story is probably the most appealing, I think, to comic book fans because it is a story about Dan Pusey. And he will, he is a comic book artist, imagine for like the big two, for Marvel DC, um, superhero comics. But he's an artist that feels like he, his artwork is more important than that and that he should be taken more seriously as an artist, an artiste, if you will. And this is Dr. Infinity. He's your Stan Lee kind of standing character um, in here. Um, so Dan Pusey wants to go and do artsy comic books. Like you can imagine like a fan of graphics, like these kitschy, but also pretentious independent comic books. And Dr. Infinity warns him against it, but he does it anyways. And then it ends up with Dan Pusey going back to big, big, the big two comic books and just being a starving artist that kind of hates his job and hates his life because what else can you do as an artist? All the horror stories you've heard about comic book artists and how low they're paid and that kind of thing. You can imagine that being the case. So that's what I love about that story so much is it has a lot of um, self-deprecating humor about the comic book industry because no one is off limits. Even Daniel Klaus within this own book, nobody makes fun of Daniel Klaus more than himself within these stories. No one makes fun of Fantagraphics more than Daniel Klaus within these stories. So it's not like Daniel Klaus isn't saying, oh, my comics are better because of this. Don't buy those stupid superhero comics. It's not that at all. It's him making fun of everything to do with comics. And that's the great thing about it. So that's one of the stories. Ghost World um, stars these two teenagers here that you're familiar or you can become familiar with. And I think a lot of the... <sighs> A lot of the, to people that ask me about eight ball and I try to sell them on it, I try to describe it as like, it's become like a popular thing, especially in sitcoms today of having these characters that are unlikable and having all the characters in the, in the show unlikable. Like you think like Seinfeld, um, I think was like the first show that did it in a great way. Um, friends kind of copied off of them in that regard and where all the characters really truly are super flawed. And if you think about it, kind of despicable human beings in a way. And uh, that's kind of like the vibe you get within Daniel Klaus stories is like, there's not really a hero. There's not really a, a character that you're going to like fall in love with because they're this great human being kind of thing. They're all kind of head up their own butts kind of, you know, first world problem complaints kind of thing. But they're, it's done in such a way that, like, when I ever just, I describe Seinfeld, it's done in a way where there's still moments where you care about George and Elaine and Jerry. Most of the time you see that there's pieces of crap, but there's some times you see, like, some heart in there and you care about the, story, the characters enough. And I think that's what's lost on a lot of these Seinfeld kind of stolen ideas where people forget that part of it. they just like, oh, you make a show about a bunch of uh, people that, you know, despicable characters. But they forget the part where you have to try to find a way for the audience to care. Daniel Klaus does that. So a lot of his characters, like I said, are characters that they're not heroes. They're not great people, but you'll find you'll care about them in, in some way, form or fashion. It's humorous. Um, at times it's dark humor, uh, but it's some of the funniest comments. I think one of the blurbs on the back even says uh, the funniest sad comics of, or the saddest funny comics in the world. I think is a great way to describe it. Um, but it includes, so these include, like I said, it doesn't miss out on anything from the box set. It includes all the letter pages as well. So you get the inside of each cover. That was a cover, right? Yeah. The inside of each cover has like the, um, letters pages sometimes or indicia about it. And then the back cover will have even like the old catalogs and stuff that, where you can see like in real time what they were selling for Fantagraphics at the time. So these are true facsimile edi editions and even has this tipped in modern cartoonist, which was like a mini comic that was tipped in here. Um, oh, mine came out. Okay. Um, it was tipped into this issue when it came out and it's just this, this um, little mini comic that talks about, it's kind of like a, if you're familiar with the, how to make, how to draw comics the Marvel way, this is kind of like a, how to make comics the Daniel Klaus way um, is kind of what that is. 
and in the back you get some cool title lettering. And then also, um, the, this the hardcover box that had some director commentaries, those are included in here as well. Like I said, there's no page in the, the hardcover box that, that's missing from this. So this is a great way to buy this on a cheaper budget. Um, so behind the eight ball is what the director, co director commentaries are. Um, but some of the great things is that Dan Klaus really poured his heart and soul into this comic book. Everything is lettered, like I said, hand lettered by himself, including the letters, the pages. So if you, I'm going to try to find a letter page real fast. I know I just showed you one. Um, well, real quickly. So it has a great cover, right? Great cover art by Daniel Klaus. But no page is missed. No page is, there's no wasted movement. movement. There's no wasted space within the comic book. Even the inside cover has a little bit of a comic book issue there, or comic book strip. The uh, the back cover has a catalog on it. Or no, sorry, the back cover has a comic book strip on it. This is the back cover to that issue. And then I'm trying to find a letters page though, because it's one of the craziest things I've seen a cartoonist do. Which I'm sure he's not the only one. Okay, so the letters pages. People would send him letters um, in the mail. I don't know if they're typewritten, handwritten, whatever. And Daniel Claus actually hand wrote them back into here when, when he, I guess I should show him off there. This is all handwriting, hand lettering by Daniel Klaus. And when you talk about lettering in comic books, it's not just writing the letters in the, in the balloons, even though Daniel Klaus is great at that. It's also the title lettering that the letters usually are responsible for. I'm trying to find a cover. Okay. So the cover lettering, the title lettering to eight ball always changes every issue. And it's such a great, cool little thing that, like, it truly makes each cover different. Even though it's the same comic book. I'll just show you, keep showing you some cool title lettering. So, he met, he worked with comic books in, in every facet you can imagine a comic book be, being created, drawn, writ, written, lettering. All that thing is in here. This is all 18 issues of pure Daniel Klaus... Um, id of him and what he thinks about comics i think it's great i think it's hilarious i think it's a, a work of art truly um, and i recommend everybody get it to it so like i said it's available on organic price books website at 45 dollars um, i believe i would be surprised if fanographics doesn't make this the evergreen edition to keep it in print as well um and like i said it's one of the greatest independent comic books in history in my opinion so this was Taylor Talks Comics again with Organic Price Books. I am going to be in the comments of this video. So if you have any questions about Daniel Klaus, about 8-Ball, about Fanographics or anything like that, I love talking comics. Um, I'll be in the comments talking with you. Thank you.